Hello everyone, it's Christina from Hourwood Home. Welcome back to my channel. I'm in my basement yet again to give you a little mini tour of this big storage area that I have set up down here. Over the past several years, this has been sort of an ever-changing space. We actually used to have a bar that was built in about here. I know I'm in the dark right now. I only have these three lights above me, so bear with the poor lighting. But anyways, the bar used to be in this general area and it was quite large, took up most of the space. And while it served its purpose for us in our 20s, in our 30s, it's just not appropriate anymore for our lifestyle and our, I guess, storage needs. So the bar actually came out a few years ago because we had water damage and we just decided we're not gonna bother rebuilding it. So we took it out and it's kind of just been a catch-all space over the years. We didn't really know what to do with the space. So we did have a few shelving units set up and just kind of put whatever down here. But over the last year or so, I've been doing a lot more preserving and I've wanted to build up our pantry a bit more. So I've slowly taken over and now this whole space is pantry space and overflow kitchen accessory space. So I'm going to do my best to show you everything that's down here. We might change camera angles a few times, but bear with me. I think it's going to be an interesting video and I hope that you enjoy it. I'll start in this section because that's where the camera is set up right now for a good angle of these two shelves, which you might recognize from my what I preserved for each month videos. So this shelf is primarily my preserves shelf and then I've got a couple um, spaces over here. So I've got my preserves organized by season. On the top I have my collection of vintage canning jars which I don't use for canning because they're not safe for canning but I use them for pantry items. I also have some fermenting supplies. This is pretty much empty because I'm using them all for fermenting but I've got some of these fermenting coils I guess and some special lids. I also keep some jars in here that I use just for fermenting. On the very bottom of this shelf I have these two containers of jars and lids that are not safe for canning for various reasons. Some of them are obvious, like this is a plastic peanut butter container that we washed out and we can use it just for dry goods or if I'm going to be putting something in the fridge. Um, for example, when I make yogurt, I strain out the whey and put it in these plastic containers in the fridge or freezer. Other containers, um, this canning jar, it's got some staining up here. I think it might be rust actually, I'm not sure, but I'm not gonna take any chances and use that when I'm canning. So it's just a fridge jar, freezer jar, or dry goods. And I also just have a bunch of lids and rings that can't be reused for canning. So on this top shelf, I have my pressure canner and my steam canner goes here, but it's in the kitchen right now because I've been using that today. In this little box, I just have my canning supplies. So I keep the manuals for both my canners in this box. I've got my various thermometers. This one's a candy thermometer. And then I have a cheese making thermometer. I use them both for when I make jam. Um, I also have some cheesecloth and jelly bags and that kind of thing. I like having them all just in one location so that I can easily grab what I need or take the whole thing upstairs if I need to. I also keep my magnetic jar lifter, jar lid lifter, and my special jar tongs in this box. But those are upstairs because I was using them earlier. I was running out of space on my metal shelf for my preserves, so I did start taking over a few here. This is all just October um, on this shelf and then November, December on this shelf. It is looking kind of picked over on both shelves because of course we've been using the items that I've been preserving. 
On the bottom shelf, I have just some kitchen accessories, appliances, that kind of thing. So on the left here are some accessories for a turkey fryer. We also have a blender that we use for grinding whole coffee beans. I know you can buy an actual coffee grinder, but this is what we have and we're making do with it. It actually works very well. This little tote thing has just a bunch of different kitchen accessories. Um, I've got another blender container, that one's metal, and just some pie tins, some various small kitchen accessories. Uh, nothing too exciting. My immersion blender also goes in there. I guess I don't need to have it all in a container, but I think it just looks a little bit neater and tidier. Moving on to this partly hidden shelf. It is taller than the others. Um, it's the same one as this, just with an extra tier. We actually have a window here, so we didn't want to be blocking it with a shelf. And if for whatever reason we need to access that window, it can easily be accessed by just moving the pots up here. This was my husband's as well, but he was able to kind of condense some of that stuff and I was able to relocate some of it. So I was able to use it for my canning jars. But this one he had been using up until recently when he decided to clean it all off for me so I could use that. So this one on the top, it has some more kitchen things. I've got extra plastic containers in here for things like soups or stews that I'm going to be freezing, or if anybody's coming over and taking home leftovers, then I've got some containers they can take that aren't my good containers. I also have another small container behind there that has extra cutlery and some seasonal things like popsicle molds and corn holders. And on top of that, I have my portable cake container. And then hidden right in the back corner is another little basket of small appliances. I think it's just our waffle maker, maybe. Yeah, it is just the waffle maker that's up there. The other shelves are empty jar storage. I bought a lot of canning jars this year because I knew I wanted to do a lot of canning. So I was kind of just storing them in various places throughout the basement and I didn't like that. I want them all just in one location so I don't lose any or forget where they are and I can keep track of how much I have. So I was able to clear three shelves for empty jars. And so far it's working well. In this crate, I have the tiny little, I call them jelly jars. I think it's just easier to keep them in a container because I can stack them and they just don't take up as much space. On the bottom of that shelf, I have my cider press, just all the different components for making our own cider at home. It has a lot of pieces, so it does take up a lot of space, but it's out of the way and it's also within reach, which is great. Moving on to this unit. This is my most recent shelving unit. I actually have another one in the garage and my dad gave them to me because I needed more shelves. It's kind of awkward having the shelves on an L shape, but it works. There's enough space between the two that I can access everything I need to. So on the very top shelf, I have things that are light and not used frequently. So I've got an extra bunch of lunch coolers. This one is my yogurt making cooler. I use it as an incubator for keeping my yogurt warm. And then this one is just an empty cooler for whatever we need. This is kind of what I'm calling my baking section. So I've got an assortment of flowers and grain flakes here. Yes, they're looking low because we're at the end of the month, which is when I do my grocery shopping. So I will be filling those up soon. I also have this old style scale. I think it was my husband's, uh, somebody in his family. I'm not sure where it came from. I don't really use it because it's not very accurate, but it's nice to look at. So I keep it down here with the baking supplies. On this shelf, I have two baskets. Um, this one is just miscellaneous baking things. So I've got chocolate chips and uh, what do I have? Extra salt, molasses, cornstarch, whatever you use for baking. And then this one is just Christmas baking specifically because I was buying things that I planned to use only for Christmas baking and I wanted them all separate. We are not in Christmas season anymore, so I will be consolidating these two and then I'll have an empty basket. 
Next to that, I have my overflow of spices. I keep my spices up in the kitchen, but I buy a lot, so I keep the extra down here. Behind that, I've got a small crate with my dried sourdough starter and some dried yogurt starter. On the bottom of this shelf, I have my canning lids in that container. I definitely need to organize it better because they're kind of just all thrown in here. They're mostly separated rings and lids, but it's not the best system, so I just need to figure something else out. The blue tote underneath is just some overflow pantry items. This is my beautiful potato bin that my dad custom built for me. It's kind of hard to see in there. I do actually have a bag of grocery store potatoes but underneath of that, I have my garden potatoes that I grew and keep in there over winter. This is my last shelving unit on the opposite side. There's a bunch of different things here. Um, the very top shelf is just some miscellaneous items. On this shelf, I have a basket of uh, homegrown tea blends and some, what are these, dried orange slices for putting into hot drinks. I also keep my vinegars down here. Um, as you can see by this label, it's vinegars and acids. I was keeping store-bought vinegar, uh, lemon juice, and lime juice down here, but I'm also keeping my homemade vinegar in its various stages. This is our snack shelf. So in this basket, I have different crackers and fruit bars. Soda crackers don't fit in that basket, so they stay in their large box just out here. I also usually keep some extra empty jars down here. Jars like this that aren't uh, for canning, just for dry goods storage. And I keep my basket of wide mouth plastic lids. We use these for uh, the vinegar when it's finished fermenting and for yogurt making. Alrighty, this is the next shelf. In this basket, I usually keep canned fish as you can see from that label, but I'm all out. So I will be refilling that when I go grocery shopping. I also just keep an assortment of dried um, vegetables on this shelf. I guess bean, beans are technically a veg vegetable, right? So these are just some dried mixed beans from my garden. When I was canning beans, I didn't have enough to fill another jar and they were, the jars were too full as it was, so I couldn't top them up with any more. So I decided to just dehydrate any of the remaining beans and peas and then just store them all together like that. At the back there, I have some mixed salad greens that I've just dehydrated and I crumble those up to put them into sauces and stews. And I've got some dried bell peppers and dried carrots there. I just dehydrated those. Bottom shelf is uh, a basket with pasta and rice and then a large container of beans and then a bunch of other jars of dried lentils. Next to that, I have this little rolly cart, which doesn't really serve a purpose, but I don't want to get rid of it because it's been very useful in the past and I just, I want to find a way to use it. So for now it sits here until we can find a better place for it. Mostly empty except for a basket, which I use to bring up um, jars and small things so I don't have to carry them all. Uh, this makes it easier. And on this shelf, I have my birdhouse gourds drying out. We will use these to make either birdhouses or water bottles. I know they look terrible, but that's how they are supposed to look. Across from me, where I have the camera set up, is another section with some food storage space in the sense that it is a freezer and a fridge. I hope that you enjoyed seeing this basement pantry space. Um, it's definitely been a work in progress over the years and it might still change 
We've been here for 10 years now and I think this is probably its intended purpose. Um, it's a great use of space. There's lots of room as you can see. I'm very surprised to actually have this much food and kitchen accessories that I need a whole basement storage area for it, but I think I'm okay with that. Everything here serves a purpose. It's either food or helps me to make food, so I'm happy with what I have. I might end up taking over more space for my preserves depending on how next year goes. We'll see about that. So if you would like to see updates on my preserve collection, uh, do be sure to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. I'll leave some playlists I think you might like at the end of this video. And if you enjoyed this one, I hope that you give it a thumbs up or leave me a comment. And of course, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.